assalamu alaikum uh, welcome to lecture 20 of data mining so i hope all of you are doing well uh, so i am using a different computer for this presentation today actually earlier this morning i had a another lecture my other computer uh, audio or recording was not working and it's still not working I'm, i don't know what's wrong with it so i pulled out my old computer i hope this one uh, works me works for me for the rest of the class because it does get hot so let's see so anyway uh, but at least i think you can hear my voice and the recording is uh, continuing uh, <clears throat> so today uh, we will continue with our discussion on k uh, sorry continue our discussion with clustering and in the previous lecture we had discussed the k medoids and the k modes clustering algorithm in addition to the k means that we discussed earlier so all of these are uh, partitional clustering algorithms and last time we also discussed the hierarchical clustering approach and we mentioned that in hierarchical clustering uh, we have a local merge decision that is made at each iteration and that merge decision is based on uh, a notion of similarity between clusters so kind of generalizing the notion of similarity between points to clusters so so that's the idea behind hierarchical clustering so hierarchical clustering uh, does not require the input k which is a number of clusters desired uh, it is interactive in the way that the desired number of clusters is decided by the end user either qualitatively or quantitatively by evaluating the clusters at some point during the hierarchy so the hierarchy that is formed in a uh, hierarchical clustering is also sometimes called a dendrogram so we talked about all of this last time so today uh, we will discuss bert which is also a hierarchical clustering algorithm as well as a incremental clustering algorithm and then after that we'll start talking about density based clustering so i think these are the two main topics i will cover today and then of course we have a quiz at the end of class today as well so any questions so we are going to discuss birch so as i said birch is a hierarchical clustering it is also incremental clustering so the idea behind incremental clustering is that uh, it can cluster objects uh, as they arrive we don't need the entire data set all at once as were required for the k means as well as for the k medoid clustering algorithm that we saw earlier so this is a big plus for this algorithm and uh, it is only applicable to numeric data sets so all the attributes must be numeric and we will see why this is so so now uh, let's introduce some concepts that are relevant to uh birch the first concept is it it uses a cluster representative vector so instead of uh, representing a cluster by one point which the k means do or k medoids do it represents the cluster with some stats and that stats those stats are captured in a clustering feature vector cf vector and this cf vector has three things so let's say if you talk about a specific cluster cf for a specific cluster this vector has three things 
n, which is the number of objects in the cluster, ls, which is the linear sum of the values of the objects in the cluster, and ss is the squared sum of values of objects in the cluster. So this vector thus um, maintains the key stats of the objects in a cluster. And from these stats, you can also find some other useful things like the mean of the cluster as well as the diameter of the cluster. So, so let's take a quick example. Let's say you have a cluster with two points. Let's say one and one 2D cluster. And let's say two and two, or let's say two and three. So two points, so what did CF would be? There are two points in it, right? So LS is basically the linear sum of all the points element wise. So if you talk about the first element, the first object is zero, the second object is two. So the linear sum is two and uh, zero. Thank you. Uh, just a second. So one, one and two, three, okay. So this would be three, two plus one, three, and three plus one, four. So this is the linear sum. And the squared sum is you square each value and then sum it. So one squared plus two squared, four plus one, five. And three squared is nine plus one is 10. So this is a, uh, the cluster vector or CF vector for this cluster, which has two points. So one of the important characteristics of this CF vector is that if you have another cluster, let's say, so let's say I call this CF1. And let's say I take another cluster with just one point, three, three. Iska jo CF2 hai usko. This would be one. Uh, okay. So three, three hai na? So LS kya hoga iska three and three and SS would be nine and nine. So this is a CF for this cluster. So if at any stage in your point, if you merge cluster one and cluster two, the new CF that you get would simply be the CF vector sum. So in other words, the merging operation can be represented simply by the sum of the corresponding vectors. Okay. So, so this would be three. Upper ki values are mujhe yaad nahi hai. Kya thi? Five ten. Sir, N, LS or SS uh, LS is the linear sum, SS is a squared sum. Or N? N is the number of objects. Yeah. Okay, so let me uh, copy this.
So we have one, three, and three, and then nine and nine. So simply you need to add those two. So add ka matlab ye ke n n add karenge, ls ls add karenge, ss ss add karenge, and you'll get the CF for the new cluster. So which will be three, of course, here, and then we have uh, three plus two is five, three plus six is nine, uh, three plus three is six, and then we have uh, yeah, tha. three and four, sorry. So three and three would be six, four and three. This would be seven, okay? And then we have five plus nine, 14. And then we have 10 plus 9, 19. So we get the updated CF vector for the merge cluster. So in this way, if you have multiple clusters and you have their CFs, and if you merge all of those clusters, you can get the CF of the merge cluster by simply adding the vectors for those clusters, the CF vectors for those clusters. Okay. So this is an important characteristic which would be used in the Birch algorithm. So secondly, if you have a CF vector, you can always find the mean of the vector, meaning the centrally located point in the cluster. So how can you find the mean of, for example, this? So basically the mean point is basically LS divided by N. So in this case, it would be what? Uh, we have six divided by three and seven divided by three. So we don't need to keep all the data points. We just need the CF. Once you have the CF, you can find the uh, mean of the cluster, okay? And of course you can find other characteristics as well. Another characteristic that is required in our computation as we see is the dia of the cluster. So the diameter of the cluster is actually given by, uh, 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 actually might make a mistake. So, so two into, uh, this formula is uh, uh, slightly, uh, Confusing, so I will explain it with an example, maybe. SS minus two into LS, LS as a vector, LS as a vector transpose into LS. divided by n into n minus one. So uh, you can actually verify this. If you have these stats for a cluster, the diameter of the cluster, which is the average or the pairwise distance between all the points in that cluster can be written in terms of these stats in this way. Okay. So, Let's uh, take the example that we have. Six, seven, 14, 19, okay. So, so let's, let me first compute, uh, what does SS, SS mean? By the way, all the values in this equation are scalar, even though SS and LS would be in general vectors. So that's why I said this equation is somewhat confusing. So I'm going to give this example. So SS was what? 14 and 19. 
So simply this bar that I've written, it means that you're summing of 14 plus 19. So 20 plus 14 is uh, 34. This is 33. So this is what you get for SS vertical bars. And the second thing was I wrote LS transpose into LS. So this is actually the inner product of the vector LS with the vector LS. So what was the vector four, uh, six and seven? So this would be uh, six into six plus seven into seven. So this would be uh, uh, this would be six into six is thirty six. So thirty six plus forty nine. So fifty plus forty nine is eighty eight. Okay. Uh, I think I made a mistake there. Let me just double check because this formula is that's confusing. Sorry. Actually, this computer is quite slow. Uh, just sorry. Uh, I think I uploaded these solutions on LMS last time. Okay, SS uh, diameter K here. It, yeah, formula recover. So there's an N there as well. I missed the N. TK. So die is basically so two into n into ss. So that was uh, what I wanted to correct. So this is the formula for a diameter. So this would give you the diameter. Okay. 
So what is SS? It's simply the sum of the values in the SS bar, of course, is the sum of the values in the squared sum vector. And LS transpose LS is basically the inner product. Both of these values will give you a scalar. So the diameter, of course, would give you a scalar value. So this is the diameter of the cluster that contains or that defined by the CF vector. Okay, so now, uh, so this is about the CF. Now, exactly how does this algorithm work? So let's discuss that. Uh, so you have the CF vector representing a cluster and we know how to compute the mean of the cluster and we know how to compute the die of the cluster given the CF vector. So now let's uh, take a simple example to illustrate this and you can look at the uh, example uh, from the solutions that I uploaded last time later on. So let's say we take a very simple example, 1D example. So let's say you get the object eight. So the object eight then, so remember this is incremental. So you create the first CF, which has just one object. And of course, LS is just eight and squared is 64. So we have the first CF. This first CF would lie in the first node of our tree, which is called the CF tree. Okay. So if we let's say add a new object, let's say object next object three after. So since you have just one node and one CF, you will add it to this node. Okay. And we'll see how we have the other decision. If you add it to this node, your CF gets updated. So you get two here. So three plus uh, eight is 11. So three times three is nine, 64 plus nine is 73. So ye aapka nea CF ho gaya. So whenever a CF contains more than one object, you have to compute its diameter, which is part of the uh, requirement. So if the diameter is greater than some user specified threshold, then it means that this cluster is now big enough, we will have, we will have to split it. This new object would not be placed in this cluster or in this CF. Okay? So let's say I'm, I'm just giving a hypothetical example. Let's say three am dalte the diameter bad jata. Is ka matlab ye ka ye CF humare pas original jo CF tha, which was CF one, which is just one, eight and 64, wo waise hi rahega. Hum ek naya CF mana denga, CF two, which is of course one with three and nine. So now we have two CFs, two clusters. Theek hai? So now there are actually two levels of granularity in the birth. One is CF, which is a cluster. And then we have a node, which is a tree which is part of a tree, a node can contain multiple CS or clusters. Okay? And as such, there are two uh, parameters that are used in Birch. One is B, which is called branching factor and which is also equal to uh, so max number of CS per node, okay? So this is a parameter that you will have to specify, which says that what is the maximum number of CFs allowed per node? And of course, the other is the dia threshold. So this is also a parameter. So process kya hai? Ek nea object aata, you need to decide to which cluster it lies. So let's say upar mere paas your example thi, ab mere paas CF one tha, Usme 1 tha, 8 tha, or 64 tha, CF, CF 2 tha, Usme 1 tha, 3 tha, or 9 tha. So let's say I get a new object which is 7. So now I have two options now. Wo CF 1 me jayega ya CF 2 me jayega. Ab ye kisna decide karna hai? We decided based on the nearest cluster to which 7 lies. And nearest is the centroidal distance. So 7 obviously is closer to 8 rather than close to three. 
So CF would then uh, seven would be added to CF one. So ये CF one में जब add करेंगे seven को, this becomes two, and then we have seven plus eight is fifteen, and seven plus seven is forty nine plus sixty four. Uh, 50, which is 114, 113, and of course CF2 will be there. One, three, and nine. But since we have added a new object into CF2, its a die check will be done for CF2 check. Will be done, and if it is less than the threshold, there is nothing that we we would do. But if it is greater, then its means that this seven. इस सी एफ में भी नहीं आ सकता एक नया सी एफ बनेगा इसका ठीक है सो अगेन लेट्स टेक दर एग्जाम्पल से थ्रेश होल्ड इज ग्रेटर देन डाई ग्रेटर देन थ्रेश होल्ड अगेन दिस हाइपोथेटिकल एग्जाम्पल इसका मतलब है कि सी एफ थ्री बनाना पड़ेगा हमको वन एंड सेवन एंड फोर्टी नाइन बट लेट्स से मेरे पास बी इज इक्वल टू टू था इसका मतलब एक नोट में दो से ज्यादा सी एफ आ ही नहीं सकते so then this this is another process in birch ab aapka tree split hoga node split hoga kis tarah split hoga ab aapke paas teen cfs hain cf1 cf2 or cf3 so you will have to split this into two nodes now two cfs ek node mein chale jayenge ek node mein ek hi cf rahega and and then like in the b tree wo node jab split hota hai उसका एक रूट नोड बन जाएगा और नीचे स्प्लिट नोड के दो आ जाएंगे सो अगेन दिस इज स्ट्रक्चर सो बेसिकली ये नोड है आपका तो लेट्स से एक नोड है तो उसमें सी एफ वन है व्हाट्स हैपनिंग तो so, एक नोड में सी एफ वन है और सी एफ टू है तो ये एक नोड है आपका ठीक है तो लेट्स से जब ये सी एफ थ्री नहीं बन सकता और लेट्स से सी एफ सी एफ थ्री आ गया हमारे पास और इस इसमें कैपेसिटी आपकी सिर्फ टू की है तो यू हैव टू क्रिएट टू नोड्स तो वो टू नोड टू नोड्स आपके जो होंगे लेट्स से अगेन वील हैव टू डिसाइड Which two nodes are the furthest away? So let's say CF one, CF one or CF, let's say two, सबसे दूर थे. वो दो nodes के अंदर डाल दिया आपने. और जो CF three था, we will assign it to that node to which it is closest. So let's say ये CF three जो था, CF two के साथ ही close आ रहा है. तो आपके पास ये दो nodes बन गए. अब इन दो nodes का एक parent होगा. वो पेरेंट वो एक ही नोड होगा और उस पेरेंट में इस सी एफ वन और सी एफ टू और सी एफ थ्री का बेसिकली uh, उसमें दो काइंड ऑफ डिफिकल्ट एक्सप्लेन दिस वे लेट मी गो बैक ये फिगर बहुत माटी बन गई एक्चुअली ये मशीन जो है इसमें टच भी चल रहा है वो तस्वीर सही बन नहीं रही so let me just take a hypothetical example let's say आपके पास सी एफ वन था 
or CF two tha in one node. So let's say this is node one, node one. Isme ye do chize. And let's say aapne ek nea uh, object aya wo CF two me dala, but CF two ka diameter exceed ho gaya. Iska matlab ye ke aapne nea uska CF banana hai. So node one me ab aapke pa CF one hai, CF two hai. Or CF3 hai. But, but let's say branching factor is equal to 2. This is that one node is equal to 2. So we will have to split node 1. Theke? So split me kya hoga? So find the two CFs that are most dissimilar. So let's say, just again, for example, say, let's say they are CF1 and CF3. So then we have node 1 would become CF1 as an anchor. Node 2 would have CF3 as the anchor. CF2 CF2 would go to the node, uh, to the cluster or to the node to which it is most similar. So let's say, wo, CF1 ke saath most similar tha. So ye idhar a gaya. Ab aapke paas actually ab jo original ek node tha, do node ban gaye. Pehle node mein CF1, CF2 aur dusre node mein CF3 aaya. Theek hai? Ab uh, the, the, the thing is like in B trees, if you remember your B trees from uh, data structures and algorithms, your tree will grow from up, bottom upward. Now, these two nodes are going to become a node which is, you can say, the root node. Now, there will be root node mein do CFs. One CF1 will uh, again, notation issue ho raha, CF root node. Ka main keh so, this would be uh, the sum of node 1. Upar jo node 1 likha hai, uska hoga. Or, and CF2 jo iska hoga, root node ka, this is of course the sum of CFs in node 2 above. Actually, node 2 may serve ek CF tha, to uska sum of course wohi rehega. So in other words, waan se aapka pas pointers aare hain that goes to these respective uh, uh, nodes below. So, aapke paas your diagram aap banegi. Let me see if I can do that again. So, matlab aapke paas ye root node tha. Isme do CFs honge. Ek CF idhar aur dousra CF udhar. Iska idhar aa gaya aur iska idhar aa gaya. Thik hai? So now you have the tree that is growing from bottom upwards. It will always be remain balanced. So that's why birch is balanced. B tree is balanced. Roots masha ek level pe hongu because growing from bottom upward. And whenever now a new object comes, aapne root node se upar aana hai, dekhna hai, to which CF it is closest, wo path follow karenge until you go to the leaf node, loose node mein jo, jis CF ke saath wo closest, us mein dal denge. And then, then, of course, you check the dia. If the diameter increases, then, of course, it would not fall in that CF. Ek niya CF add karenge. Us node mein jaga hai, to there is no problem. Ab upar ja ke saari update karte hai. But us mein jaga nii hai, to phir wo node split hota hai. Jab node split hoga, to phir uska impact upar propagate karega. And maybe your tree would grow. So this is how this uh, algorithm actually works. So as I said, incremental and hierarchical. Hierarchy jo hai, iski, jis tarm dendrogram banate the, niche se upar ja raha tha. Ye basically uh, it starts with one node and then becomes more nodes as you get more data. And the number of clusters is actually determined by the two parameter b, which is branching factor, and the dia. Dia ab wo chota kar denge, wo saare clusters ban jayenge. B ab kya lenge? B is the branching factor. Zada kar dein to ek node mein beshmar clusters a jayenge. And your tree ka jo depth hai, wo thodi ho jayegi. 
So B and? actually controls the depth and DI controls the number of clusters. Sir, 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 is example root node uh, Just give me a second. Sir, is example se root node pe kaun se CFs uh, is example mein root se? Root node pe koi CF hoga? Is example. Haan, ji, hoga. CF. Jo root Sir, node mein jo CF hoga na, wo uska jo bhi child hai, uska sum hoga CF ka. Remember, the root node hai, uh, let's say the left wala jo root node hai, ka jo CF hai, wo jo left node ka jo CF ka sum hai, wo uska CF hoga. Or jo right wala jo root node ka CF hai, wo jo right node jo child hai, uske CF ka sum hoga. It's the merger sir, of... Sir, one node... Sir, one node has CF1 and CF2 and one node 2 is CF3. How do you understand the tree structure in the tree? So let me... So I'm talking about leaf node. Node 1 leaf node. Okay? This is what you're saying. It's CF1. और CF2 है ठीक है और लीफ नोड पे ही नोड 2 जो था इसमें CF3 है अब इसका जो रूट बनेगा ऊपर इस लेवल पे अपर लेवल पे जो नोड बनेगा I just call it नोड इसमें जो लेफ्ट CF होगा लेट से CF1 ही कहता हूं इसको बिकॉज उस लेवल का CF है सो दिस वुड बी CF1 ऑफ द लोअर यार ये नोटेशन का इश्यू आता है तो वन इसको मैं आर कह देता इज इक्वल टू सी एफ वन प्लस सी एफ टू ये हो जाएगा और इस पे जो सी एफ टू इसका जो होगा इस लेवल का दिस इज सी एफ थ्री बट नोड ए क्या ये इस नोड में दो सी एफ हैं जो लेफ्ट वाला सी एफ है वो नीचे वाला जो नोड के जितने भी सी एफ थे उसका सम होगा जो राइट right वाला सी एफ है उसके नीचे वाला चाइल्ड जो था उसके सीएफ का सम था उसमें ऑफ कोर्स एक ही सीएफ था तो वही ऊपर आ जाएगा दिस आंसर योर क्वेश्चन और कुछ और था आपका क्वेश्चन यस सर समझ आ गई आंसर एक और क्वेश्चन था कि सिमिलरिटी हम कैसे चेक करेंगे दो सीएफ के दरमियान सेंट्रोइडल डिस्टेंस ही यहां बर्च में ज्यादा यूज होता है ऑल्दो फॉर टू क्लस्टर्स जैसे हमने हायरार्किकल क्लस्टरिंग में पढ़ा था तो सिंगल लिंक भी यूज कर सकते हैं कंप्लीट भी कर सकते हैं बट फॉर बर्ड्स द सेंट्रोइडल डिस्टेंस इज कॉमनली यूज्ड ठीक है थैंक यू सो सो लेट्स से ये आपका भी एक ट्री है लेट्स से एक और पॉइंट आ जाता है लेट्स से 21 आ जाता है तो आपने ऊपर से ही शुरू करना है ऊपर से आप देखेंगे इस 21 क्लोजर टू CF1 आर और CF2 आर Let's say it is closer to CF one R. फिर हम उसका path follow करेंगे CF one R का, तो हम नीचे आ जाएंगे node one पे. उसमें हमने देखा है, उसमें CF one है और CF two है. हमने देखा कि is twenty one closer to CF one और CF two. तो let's say it is closer to CF one, तो हम उसके अंदर डाल देंगे. और जो भी update होगा CF one का वापस propagate करेंगे, ऊपर CF one R को भी update कर दें. बलट से उसको डालने के बाद उसका डायमीटर बढ़ जाता है तो ऑफ कोर्स उसके अंदर नहीं आ सकता उस नोड में एक नया सीएफ आएगा जगह है तो फिर कोई इशू नहीं है ऊपर जाके अपडेट कर देंगे जगह नहीं है तो वो नोड स्प्लिट होगा इस लेवल पे हमारे पास अब फिर तीन नोड्स हो जाएंगे तो तीन नोड्स होने का मतलब ये है कि ऊपर भी हमारे पास तीन सीएफ चाहिए अब तीन सीएफ की जगह नहीं है तो ऊपर वाला नोड भी दो नोड बन जाए और फिर एक और ऊपर एक रूट नोड आ जाए इसका मतलब हाइट बढ़ गई आपकी तो इस तरह ये हाइट बढ़ती है आई डोंट नो इफ यू रिमेंबर योर बी प्लस ट्रीज और बी ट्रीज फ्रॉम डेटा स्ट्रक्चर एग्जैक्टली ये उस तरह ही इंसर्शन हो रही है सो यू कैन गो बैक एंड रिवाइज दैट एज वेल एज यू कैन लुक एट द एग्जांपल्स दैट आई हैव पोस्टेड ऑलरेडी एंड मे बी यू कैन आल्सो लुक एट द एग्जांपल इन द बुक ठीक है ओके सो वी आर एट वन इलेवन के टाइम वी हैव अबाउट फिफ्टीन मिनट्स
Okay, so let's look at some characteristics of this algorithm. Uh, so as I said, two things we have already determined, it is incremental as well as hierarchical, and it only works on numeric attributes. And you know why it does that. Uh, it is incremental, that's the biggest plus that we are going to uh, kind of focus on. Uh, but because of it being incremental, it does not have a global global criterion because all the objects are not known all at once. So obviously there is no global uh, optimization that is being done. You only do local merges as long as new points come in. Okay, and this is also true for all hierarchical clustering algorithms. Okay. Secondly, it is somewhat order sensitive. So meaning that let's say you have the same set of points. Let's say you have 100 objects. Hain. Un so objects ko aap ek order mein aap cluster karenge or dusri dafa dusre order mein cluster karenge, you might get slightly different clusterings. And this is of course because of the incremental nature of the Birch algorithm. Uh, uh, again, because of that, as well as because there's no global optimization, local decision, decision it cannot be undone. Okay. So iterative re relocation, a concept we talked last time, it does not So order sensitivity is in it. So actually, uh, to overcome both of these problems, oftentimes Birch is used as a pre-clustering algo, algo. After, and once you have done this, created this CF tree, which is a clustering uh, tree for this algorithm, you can take any level of the clustering and then apply a global clustering technique like k-means, for example. Okay. So that would now remove any uh, issues regarding the global optimization. Of course, this would be at a particular point in time. As new data comes in, the tree would change and then you have to do the k is again. Okay. Uh, so the algorithm is, of course, the basic algorithm birth is incremental. So as such, it is O n as a, and as a object occurs comes in, you get the clustering. But as you will see, you also have to do a lot of operations with respect to merging, with respect to splitting, with respect to increasing of the height of the tree. Wo is me included nahi hai. Wo include karenge to it would move towards n square. And of course, those are part of the Birch algorithm. Okay, but if you think of just as an incremental algorithm, then of course it's linear in the number of objects. But jo humne baki processing karni hai, it will move towards n square. Of course, n log n tak aap kar sakte hai, but in the very worst case, I'm saying it will be n square. ON, of course, because it is incremental. Okay. All right. So I think uh, with that, we will uh, conclude this algorithm. Uh, so two key advantages, incremental hai, and secondly, it's hierarchical or aap kisi point pe aap k-means bhi apply kar sakte hai. So you can get the benefits of both hierarchical and partitional clustering algorithm using Birch. So now let's uh, introduce uh, the next uh, algorithm or class of algorithms, which is basically called density.
so so far we have talked about two main clustering algorithms categories one was partitional clustering algorithm the other was hierarchical clustering algorithm partitional clustering algorithms were prototype based mostly uh, and the prototype of course was usually the median or the mode or the median a medoid uh, in the hierarchical clustering algorithm also it was prototype based usually it was single link complete link or centroid or median uh, prototype based in other words clusters were defined by or clusters were prototype based clusters okay so in density based clustering clusters are density based in other words defined by density not by photo and let's say some dia so they are de defined by the proper notion of density and as you know what is density to compute density you need number of objects and then you also need the volume of the space in which those objects lie जब ये दोनों चीजें होंगी दोनों का रेशियो लेंगे तो ये डेंसिटी दे देंगे डेंस रीजन इज देन कंसिडर्ड ए क्लस्टर ऑफ कोर्स डेंस बेस्ड ऑन सम थ्रेश इससे ज्यादा होगी डेंसिटी तो ये एक क्लस्टर फॉर्म कर रहा है सो द डेंसिटी बेस्ड क्लस्टरिंग एल्गोदम्स आर यूज द नोशन ऑफ डेंसिटी बेस्ड क्लस्टर्स सो जितने भी एल्गोदम इसमें हैं दे कंसिडर क्लस्टर्स टू बी डेंसिटी बेस्ड इन ए वे ये जो क्लस्टरिंग एल्गोदम्स की कैटेगरी है इसका नाम इज सेम एज द क्लस्टर्स की जो टाइप के साथ है प्रीवियसली पार्टिशनल क्लस्टरिंग वॉज नॉट कॉल्ड प्रोटोटाइप क्लस्टरिंग प्रोटोटाइप वॉज अ क्लस्टर्स एंड हायरकल ऑफ कोर्स इज द हायर आर्की दैट यू गेट इन एल्गोदम उसमें भी मोस्टली प्रोटोटाइप बेस्ड क्लस्टर्स ही होते हैं तो इन दिस केस जो एल्गोदम्स हैं और जो टाइप्स हैं या दोनों के नेम सेम है So just to make this distinction so that you are clear, the so clusters जो बनेंगे they are they will be density based and the algorithms that are based on this clusters are also called density based clusters. So in this, actually various algorithms and we will just study one as a representative algorithm which is called D B S C A D B S C A N or D B scan. ठीक है, so density based scan, so this was one of the first most popular algorithms for density based clustering. To understand this uh, algorithm, we will have to understand some concepts. So let's start introducing those. <clears throat> so first of all, as I said, clusters are defined by dense regions okay in qualitative sense so we will not we will not need to quantify this okay so to understand this let's understand three types of objects there is a called what is a core point then we have what is known as a uh border point point and then there are point that are neither core points or border point they are then outliers so let's look at these three types of points so what is a core point so a core point is an object so let's uh, define two parameters first so there are two parameters that are mostly used in density based algorithms and especially in min uh, db scan one is called the min pts min points theek okay. hai and the second is epsilon so min points is the minimum of 
number of objects uh, <clears throat> that should exist in a radius of epsilon for the object to become, for the region to become dense. So epsilon actually, ab ye notation we use karna jo paper mein ya db scan mein use hoti. This is basically the radius of region, and of course main PTS number of points in region that make the region a dense region. Okay. So now coming back to the core points, core point. So, so a core point lies in a dense region. So a core point is one such that is epsilon neighborhood has minimum number of points. So let's say a neighborhood I'm defined karte and EPS of some core, some point some point P, okay? If this neighborhood, let's say this is a neighborhood uh, around P defined by epsilon, okay? So do you understand this? A set samaj le aap. So if n eps of p is greater than main pts then p is a core point so visually aap dekhe Visually, up taking it, let's say, P have a pass or uska koi me epsilon radius defined color the EPS. So, is kamat labeke ye a radius is kate get there. So, let me draw it again. So, this is the radius around it. So, if within this area or space, of course, 2D may ye area have in general, it would be n dimensional, it will be some space. If within this space there are more than min number of points then we say that this P is a core point, which in a qualitative sense means that is an object lies, lies in the center of a dense region. Okay. So, you have this point, this is slope uh, epsilon, this is and it is benchmark minimum number of points, is zyada hai. then we say that this is a core point. So again, now continuing this logic, let's say ye point hai aapke paas, P, which is a core point, uske ge, ye jaga hai. So let's say isi region may koi or point P hai. Let's say ye point may pa ek idar hai, let's say Q. So Q would be a border point if Q lies in the region of a core point, but itself it is not a core point. So if I draw this again, so let's say this is a core point and this is a border point. Meaning that when I talk plus, I make an area area, there is not a minimum number of points. But plus is coming to a core point ke region. Mein aa raha hai. So let's say this is a core point and this is a plus, this is coming to it. But when I plus the edgate circle, it won't be dense. Nahi ban. So then this is called a border point. And then finally, you have a core point, a border point, hai, and then there may be some other point star. This is not coming to a dense region. This is not a core point. This is an outlier. Hai. 
then this is the outlier. So three types of points, dot, core point, because it's can there are a minimum number of points. And then you might have some pluses here, okay? And, uh, and then anything else that is outside this pluses is an outlier. But of course, in the real world data set, you might have multiple core points. This core point is a core core point, it's a core core point, it's a core core point. So all of these core points, when connected, this is from what is known as a cluster. So this is the cluster that is formed in, for example, DB scan, when you connect all the regions that are dense, they form a cluster. And any point within this region that is part of this region, but itself is not a core point would be a border point. And any point beyond this is an outlier. So if I want to write border point lies in a dense region, but it is not a core point itself. Okay. And then of course, outlier point are neither core or Border point. Okay. So we have defined a core point as lying within a dense, at uh, the center of a dense region. So if you connect all those dense regions, then they form a cluster. So basically, a cluster is a maximally connected. Uh, region formed by core points. Okay. Actually, there is another definition which uh, we will discuss. I think we're running out of time, so I don't want to introduce it right now, which is basically about connectivity, directly density connected, density connected and so on. So which will, which is, are of course based on these ideas of core point, border points and outliers, but they are more uh, appropriate in defining the cluster regions. So, so as such, as you can assume, depending on whatever epsilon that you have taken, so you can have clusters that are connected and they give you arbitrary shapes. So you can have clusters that are of this shape, for example, or you can have clusters that are like this, depending on how you have selected epsilon and uh, minimum points, and depending on the dense regions in your data set, you can get arbitrarily shaped clusters. So this is a big, uh, you can say, advantage of density-based clustering, as opposed to most of the prototype-based techniques that we saw earlier. So in prototype-based techniques, so for example, if we had a cluster like this, actual data set may stand a cluster. So if you put it on K-means, it will be cut it and make spherical clusters. So it, it will kind of combine the two shapes that I have created here. While in DB scan, you will be able to identify these shapes accurately. Of course, dependent on the parameters, epsilon and uh, minimum point that you have selected. So I think I'll stop here. Uh, we have a quiz today. 
So please prepare for the quiz. Any questions? <laughs> 